Hi there, I'm Spencer Hall. I am joined today by Bomani Jones, who follows Texas football, and Mina Kimes, a University of Washington Huskies fan. We are going to look at the college football playoff, and we are going to look at the keys for each team in order to win the game. Welcome to Big Dumb Football. I am Spencer Hall. Today, we are going to discuss the Sugar Bowl between Texas and Washington. And who better to discuss this than a non-Texas fan and a Nebraska football supporter? <laughs> I have with me Mina Kimes and Bomani Jones, uh, who will be representing to one degree or another, or at least addressing the topic thereof in Bo's case, Washington and Texas. I want to start with Mina. First of all, what are we going to see when we see Washington? For those who have not watched this team, and they are, to me, the most interesting team in said playoff, yeah. what can we expect to see? Fireworks. Offensive explosiveness, the likes of which many college football fans never get the chance to see. Uh, I mean, I, I have relished watching this Washington offense because it is like, what What if you took a quarterback who can throw – to all parts of the football field and is unafraid of doing so. And Michael Penix, uh, the best wide receiver trio, I would say in football, who's finally fully healthy and an offensive play caller in Ryan Grubb, who is unafraid of doing some of the freakiest stuff I've ever seen on a football field. And by the way, a very good offensive line, you mix all of those things together and it is unbelievable to watch right now. Yes. The kind of team that will call a reverse. Oh, I'm sorry. An end around option shot uh, shotgun option on fourth and one like it's nothing that kind of team. nothing nothing Omani what can we expect to see with Texas because this has been up to this year perennially disappointing Texas pampered Texas spoiled Texas loads of talent and ultimately disappointing what turned them around this year First of all, baby, it's the sugar bowl. Like you need, you need some more red beans and rice sugar. Like it's mm -hmm. that's 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 the ball. That that's the ball game. I'm trying to buy tickets for that. What you talk about scare me. Um, but <laughs> what you will see, you kind of like stole the lead on it. But I'm still saying anyway. This is literally probably in my lifetime the third Texas football team that's as good as it's supposed to be. That does not happen very much in the history of this program. It's like 2005, 2008, and 1990. That's when this team has ever been as good as it actually was supposed to be. And that is kind of the thing that strikes when you watch them as much as anything else is. They're going into the SEC, and they look like an SEC sort of team. Um, the fun part with them also, however, is, I mean, Quinn Ewers cut that mullet off, but uh, still plays like it. Still never know. <laughs> Still never yeah, know. The mullet is in the heart. It's not just a thing you wear on the, your head. Sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's there. Not. It's always right here in terms of <laughs> how you're going to play. Mina, I wanted to ask about this. You came up with a brilliant analogy for what you can see when you watch Kalen DeBoer run a football game. All right. His alignment. You say that he calls plays one way and he behaves and he, he looks another way. All right. How did you describe that? Well, uh, I I, th I think I say he's a lawful neutral personality mm -hmm. with a chaotic good head coach mindset. Correct. I mean, I, I it, the personality stuff is kind of incredible because you you talked about that fourth down, like that game was bonkers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and afterwards, um, this was the the Apple Cup we're talking about. He was interviewed on the field. Like college football coaches are not normal human beings. I think that is a, a, a stereotype I'm comfortable embracing. Mm -hmm. He acted in his post game interview like he was being asked directions in a Home Depot. Like he does. Like there's just zero. When I watch him, it's like watching Alex Honnold, the way he climbs in football plays. There's no fear even when there should be. It's like his amygdala doesn't work. It's like the fear is not even there. Yeah, it, it, I think it's the fact that he's like a Midwesterner or something. Like he mm -hmm. has that sort of calm steeliness to him. He seems totally unafraid, which is mm -hmm. uh, unique. And I think it's important because this offense, as we discussed, has so much firepower to have a coach who's totally unafraid captaining a ship that is built the way that they are is I think a big part of why they're so successful. 
Um, I have a quick Kalen DeBoer story to back that up. At his previous stops, he would go back, and if he was playing somebody in the playoffs that they had played the year before, he would find a play that they had scored on and that the other team didn't defend, and he would call it in the next game the next year to see if they had not defended it, and if they didn't, he would continue calling it until they didn't until they stopped it, which oftentimes they didn't. So kind of a d- too. Like in the best possible way as a college football coach. I just, I support that whenever I see it as a man who appreciates petty. Bomani, when you talk Texas, this is one of the few Texas teams I've ever seen that has that cherished uh, the, the resource that everybody fights over, which is big fasts. Big fasts, okay? Jimbo Fisher's got plenty of leisure time right now, so he'd be more than happy to introduce you to the concept of big fast. They got Devondre Sweat. They have a 360-pound man who can play wide receiver playing defensive tackle. This this is new, right? Oh, no, this is very, very new. Look, like, generally speaking, when you look at, like, gee, whatever happened to insert program here? Why, how, how come insert program here isn't as good as they used to be? And then you look up and be like, oh, they haven't had any offensive linemen drafted in 10 years. That happened to Texas. Just both sides mm-hmm. of the line of scrimmage, they stopped being noteworthy. It was the strangest thing in the world. And also this weird thing where – your state doesn't really produce defensive linemen like that because everybody mm-hmm. cares so much about offense. So the superior athletes are not specifically playing defensive tackle. They got a 362 pound dude. Cause quite honestly at 362 ain't got that many positions you can play, buddy. Like, like, like the, the idea that you're going to be good at going backwards is less likely than your idea that you're going to be good at going forward. And he got hands. That's the thing. He got hands. We're going to see him in football's PhD program, the NFL Another person that we will likely see in postgraduate play, Rome Adunze. That's right. Mina, talk about what he brings. Talk about the kind of challenges he presents for a defense and what he's meant to a team that plays, I think, as much an old school Pac-10, not Pac-12, Pac-10 style of ball in that they will take risks, they will stretch the field, and it's vital to what they do. Yeah, When you watch him, he just looks like an NFL player, uh, which sounds like really basic and Mm -hmm. generic but i would not say that about other potentially even more talented wide receivers i mean he's not gonna be the first wide receiver taken in this class of course marvin harrison jr he might not even be second behind neighbors at lsu and keon coleman but i almost i I don't want to say i have no doubt but when i watch him it seems so clear to me that he's going to have success at the next level because he's so reliable and complete. Like he has the size, he has the contested catch ability. He has the uh, route running. He's just kind of good at literally everything. He's also named after the Roman empire. So he is literally that TikTok bit about how men mm-hmm. think about the Roman empire all the time come to life. He's what we're all thinking about at every moment. <laughs> But Monty, can Quinn Ewers win this on his own? Because Texas is starting running back out for the season. Offensive line's been pretty good, but they have had to kind of improvise a running game. If this comes down to whether the man who once had the mullet and no longer does is at the core of the offensive game plan, is the defense and what they can do in the passing game good enough to outscore Washington? Oh, no, let's be clear. Quinn Ewers can always win a game for you. The Mm -hmm. question is never whether or not he can win a game for you. The question is whether or not he's going to lose it for you because that's on the board. And quite honestly, that's always higher, which what is what makes him, by the way, poor man's Rex Grossman. Right. Like that thing about Rex Grossman, college Rex Grossman. That's a different discussion. He was probably going to win that game for you. Uh, But then there was also the other part. But I mean, also, let's not forget this, too. If something were to happen to Quinn Ewers for whatever reason, certainly not wishing it upon him, I want to be clear. But if that were to happen, uh, Malik Murphy got to go. He's transferring Mm -hmm. and will not be with the team for the bowl game. That means the heretofore untested and honestly not as good, I don't think, as they probably told us Arch Manning would be thrust into action. And Texas has been in a situation in the not-too-distant past where their backup quarterback was thrown into action, and it ruined that boy. You know, it'd be really cliched for me to ask both of you for a score prediction. I am going to ask you for a score yeah, prediction. You. Yeah, Mina, go ahead. Lay it on me. 101 to 100 is my score prediction. That's no, I mean, I, I I do think it's going to be, I don't know what the line is on this. I, I would actually say Washington 38, Texas 36. I, I, like that, I know that's crazy, but like we haven't even said the word Sark today. 
Mm -hmm. This is the Dark Bowl part two. Hey, 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 hey. I just want to point this out right now. If there's anything Steve Sarkeesian knows how to do, it's cost Washington football games. If there's anything that that man can do, (laughs) is he can beat Washington. Like It's kind of like how Joe Flacco and the Browns sent that tweet out talking about how Joe Flacco was hard to beat in their stadium. Say terribly different, right? It's kind of the same thing as that. You know, he's already won in life, though, because he did get to take a boat to work regularly he got to take a boat to work he got to do men always think of the roman empire and men always think of taking to sea steve sarkeesian got to do that every day when he went to work in seattle and was proud of it but what is your score prediction for the game 41 38 texas because that score works out well for that program that i had to stop rooting for because every time they play they score a touchdown they play that damn song and it feels like i'm getting I'm, my face is just being spat in well, they, they get to keep their choo-choo song, but they lost the fandom of Bomani Jones. However, he did give us a 41-38 Longhorns prediction out of the full intellectual power of his brain, not out of the kindness of his heart. That's how you know it's genuine. Uh, for Big Dumb Football, I'm Spencer Hall. That has been Bomani Jones and Mina Kimes, who were kind enough to join us today. Enjoy the um, – can you can you give us the proper pronunciation, Bo, so, so I don't skeeve out people here? Sugar. Sugar, sugar Bowl. Sugar Bowl. Uh.